Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us look at the classification of amino acids. What are the different types of amino acids? Now amino acids can be classified as acidic, basic or neutral depending upon the relative number of amino and carboxyl groups in their molecule. Now, one very simple question. Okay, so one simple thing is for every amino acid, you will have one carboxyl group that is the COH group. This is your C. You will have one amino group. Now, we know that carboxyl group is acidic in nature. Whereas the amino group is basic in nature. So now it is a very, I mean it is something which is common. So if you have more number of acidic groups, then that amino acid will be acidic because you have more acidic groups. If you have more basic groups, then the amino acid will be basic. It is as simple as that. So if there are equal number of amino and carboxyl groups, then it is neutral. Then that amino acid is a neutral amino acid. So for example, alanine. So alanine is a neutral amino acid because it has one carboxyl group and one amino group. So equal number of carboxyl and amino group. So it is neither acidic nor basic. Now if you, if you have more number of amino groups than the carboxyl group. Now amino is again basic. So more basic groups. So obviously it is going to be basic in nature. So for example, if you see here arginine. So in arginine you have one two so multiple amino groups but there is just one carboxyl group so it is basic because amino is basic and obviously the last one if more carboxyl groups carboxyl are the acidic groups carboxylic acid is the example so if you have more carboxyl groups it is going to be acidic for example aspartic acid so here if you see there is one amino group but there are two carboxyl groups so it is going to be acidic. So based on the number of amino groups and the carboxyl groups, we can tell whether the amino acid is going to be acidic in nature or basic in nature or neutral in nature. So see, these are some of the methods by which we can classify whether the particular amino acid can be acidic, basic or neutral. Similarly, we can Similarly, we can also tell whether the, alpha, uh, the amino acid is an alpha, beta or gamma amino acid depending upon their arrangement. Now, when, whenever we we'll talk about the amino acids hereafter, that is whenever we we'll talk about the amino acids which make proteins, we are going to talk about only the alpha amino acids mostly. So, let us now look at another way of classifying amino acids. <clears throat> Again, there are two types of amino acids based upon where they are synthesized, whether they are synthesized inside the body of the living organism or they have to be provided from outside to the living organism. So based on that, there are two types of amino acids, non-essential amino acids and essential amino acids. So these are the two types. So non-essential amino acids are those which can be synthesized in the body. So inside the human body itself, it will get synthesized. So you don't need to, so you don't really need to provide it from outside. For example, alanine, cysteine, glutamate, these are some of the amino acids which get produced within your body. So they are synthesized within the body. Whereas on the other hand, there are another set of amino acids which cannot be synthesized in the body. So how will you provide them to the body? They need to be provided from outside. How from outside? Through your diet. So this is where that fact comes up, which I was telling you in the first slide. That why do we eat all these things? Why do we say that? Okay, uh, you should eat um, pulses, green vegetables, fish, egg, because they are all rich in protein. 
because they contain those essential amino acids which cannot be produced in your body so if you do not eat them you will not you will be deficient in those essential amino acids so in order to get those amino acids we should eat protein rich diet so some of the essential amino acids are histidine valine lysine so these are some of the examples of uh, uh, essential amino acids so if you talk about histidine egg soya protein uh, or so, so soya beans whatever you call it uh, then um, peanuts sesame these are some of the examples of food which are rich in histidine if you talk about valine again egg soya sesame the, these are again good source of valine lysine egg soya fish so if you see egg and soya they are very rich source of protein so that is why all these protein protein rich food should be included in your diet so now we have spoken quite a few things about amino acids so you should be clear with everything based upon where they are synthesized they are of two types essential non essential based upon their structure they can be classified as alpha beta and gamma delta amino acids right again based upon the number of acidic and basic groups they have they can be divided into acidic basic or neutral amino acids now let us look at some of the important properties of amino acids they are appearance wise they are usually colorless crystalline solids so they are solid in form and they are colorless do not have a specific color as such they are water soluble high melting point solids so generally soluble in water melting point is quite high they behave like salts rather than simple amines or carboxylic acids there is a reason behind that now they have both the things they have the amine group as well as they have the carboxylic group so they have some of some nature like acids they behave somewhat like uh, bases so considering both the things together their behavior is more like salts so they are neither like acids nor completely like bases so they behave like salts now you might ask that some time back you told that if there are more number of acidic group they are acidic that's right that they are known as acidic amino acids because they have more acidic groups but when you talk about their behavior it is not necessary that an acidic amino acid will be completely acidic in nature it it will be slightly inclined towards the acidic behavior but overall the behavior of all amino acids are more like salts now this behavior as i said is due to the presence of both acidic and basic groups in the same molecules so you have the amine group that is the basic group as well as the acidic group that is the carboxylic group in the same molecule and that is why you see this salt behavior now let us talk about an interesting concept of zwitter ion now it is very interesting to know that the same molecule has both the acidic group as well as the basic group now a basic group will always have a tendency so now this uh, basic group that is the amine group will always have a tendency to gain h plus ions whereas the acidic group will always have a tendency to lose h plus ions that is the general behavior of any acid or any base now what happens is when this amino acid is put in an aqueous solution so this is aqueous solution it is observed that the carboxyl group lose h plus ions whereas the amine group being basic in nature it gains the h plus ion now what happens now it loses h plus ion so it becomes coo minus so a minus sign comes here whereas this nh2 the amine group gains h plus and it becomes nh3 plus so this was initially the cooh carboxyl group and nh2 that is the amine group but when it is put in aqueous solution it is seen that this coo minus by losing h plus and this nh2 becomes nh3 plus by gaining that 
H plus ion. Now this form is known as the sweeter ionic form of amino acid. So this sweeter ionic form is seen or it, it can be obtained only when the amino acid is put in a neutral solution, uh, I mean an aqueous solution. Now another point to note here is that overall this ion, sweeter ionic form is still neutral. But however, the COO becomes CO minus and this becomes NH3 plus. So here it is said that this amino acid show amphoteric behavior. That is, it acts like both acid and base and this behavior happens only in aqueous medium. So this behavior is known as amphoteric behavior. That is a behavior where the particular um, compound behaves as an acid as well as a base. And we can see this behavior only in aqua solution. So this is the concept of sweeter ionic form. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.